Hello, my name is Alex. In this video, I will showcase to you how you can create a spreadsheet for any kind of character, object, animals. So basically, you have two first requirements. You need some basic knowledge of image editors. If you don't know how to use an image editor, you don't know what is a layer, you don't know what is an image, what are pixels, what are a selection, what is a paintbrush or anything like this. You shouldn't be able to do it, and you need to learn those before trying to do anything at all. Basically, if you have some basic knowledge of image editing, you can then use an existing spreadsheet. I will use this one. Once you have an existing spreadsheet, what you need to do is remove the background. If you have a background, you right-click, pixelate, and then you select the white area, you hit delete on your keyboard, and you've deleted the white area. So basically, I will leave a white background, because the white background is important. You need still to leave a white background, but the layer concerning the character should be half-lie transparent, if you see what I mean. The background transparent. So once you're there, you select the layer, you go into Filter, you go into Noise, you go into Add Noise, then you go into Repartition, you select Gaussian, you specify 45. You hit OK, you go on File Top Left, Export PNG and you export. Remember your base image must be a 256 by 256 image. This is a requirement. Don't try to mess up with that value. Please use 256 or 128 by 128. All right. So I think you get the idea. I've already done that work already. You need to go into your account, My Image References here like you see, and then in My Image References, you upload the images. I already did that. You then go into Pixel GPT Main Page. You go into the Expert section. Then you hit Ultimate Pixel Art, 256 pixel, and for my preference, but you can use any model. Here, I will use Ultimate Extreme MC Creative Item 256. You click select this AI model. Then you go at the bottom of the page, select Image References. Now, please follow carefully the settings and make sure you don't mess that up. Half of the people messes it up. They messes up a setting. So follow carefully, please. I know this is a complex part, but please follow carefully. Basically, the image strength should be between 0 and 1. 0 and 1. 0, you want something really creative, honestly. It will mess up sometimes. 1, it's stable. Then you select the images. For the images, make sure you select a shape, the original image. So the one without noise, actually. This is without noise. And for the shape image here, you see shape. And then you go into the base one, and you say the base one, the one with noise. Please, so image strength, one shape strength around five, between five and seven. It's your choice. I selected five, five, is mean more creativity, seven less creative. But sometimes it's too affected by the original image shape. Effect by small, you put it to a max shape. Effects percent of generation half in. If you want more accurate shapes, so it follows more closely the original image shape. Put higher. I will leave it at 5 for now. Then click Apply Selections. Once you're there, you can now detail your prompt. Remember, your prompt can be creative, can give some instructions, but remember, the original image is already guiding the final image. So if you ask for address, you can, you can try, yes, you can try, but you shouldn't. Be 100% sure it will work. I will try with some specific instructions. So you see the prompt, how I specified it. Coherent spreadsheet, very important. The prompt is key. Coherent spreadsheet of a magnificent cute girl, beautiful hair. Only working on white background. Only working. Very important. It already helps the AI understand what the base image is. On white background, very important. The editing part we will work with is basically beautiful hair and cute girl. So I want a very cute girl. You can use as much adjectives as possible. It's always useful. But try to not put too many adjectives at. Very cute girl with red trouser and brown hairs. Only walking on, etc., etc. 
settings like that. Now you can click hit generate image. Now you need to be patient. Let's see our image. So we can see it here actually. So you can see it has followed the prompt quite accurately. So we have a red trouser, brown, did I say brown? I don't remember. Brown hairs, yeah. So it followed closely what I asked, and it's actually using the animation position accurately. So this is really useful if you want to create multiple variations. Now we will try a more complex one. Because I know this is the simple one. Actually, a girl with a red trouser with a red dress. This is going to be complicated. I will do some manipulations in order for it to be more. It has more probability to work, but it can mess up. It's what I'm scared. It messes up sometimes when I do that. Anyway, we will try it. Redress, you see. I managed to make it work slightly. But I think it messed up. And why I say it messed up, you see the arms. Sadly, the arms aren't working. So, yeah, she lost a leg also. This is why shape is something you can play with. But obviously, you won't always get perfect results if you use a lower shape. How can we try to make it work properly? So there is the lazy part. This lazy part is what we try to do. But as anything that is lazy or basically lazy based, it doesn't always work. The more technical part, but it's not something incredibly difficult, but it needs some editing skills. Like I said, I'm just going to paint roughly a red dress. I'm going to do that, you see. And I do that. Very rough, honestly, very rough. See, it doesn't have to be the best thing in the world. I'm selecting a part for a red dress. All right, you see, so I tried to be to try, try to avoid, so I forgot how we could. Alt to remove, no, weird. Yeah, just select Alt. I don't know why it failed maybe the first time. Right, Alt to remove. So I try to not select the hand because I don't want the hand to disappear. But once you're there, you just duplicate to make a backup. You select paintbrush. You select the color red because I want a red dress. Let's remember. And I just paint, yes, like that, literally. And then I'm just going to help the AI a bit. Maybe little darker colors. And I'm just going to do that. Really basic. You see a rough sketch. But it's going to help the AI see what I mean. Remember, it has some kind of vision in some way. So if you don't help it with vision, saying what you want here, it can get complicated. You see one detail I didn't look carefully is the anti-aliasing. See the anti-aliasing, it's the way the painting is drawn. If you can manage to remove that anti-aliasing, it's extremely important in fact, right? Because it's going to mess up in the AI generation. I know it. I won't fix it for now because I don't have time. But if you manage to use a proper pixelated art editor, make sure you don't have those anti-aliasing edges. All right. I will export it as for the shape for this one. And then just like before I had to filter. Noise, add noise, cushion. Did I left the section? Maybe I left the section. I think I left the section, add noise, cushion. Forty percent. Let's say forty percent. 
so I just did another generation to see if it worked with. Right. I can't say it works very well. Every time I put a lower shape, so I've imported my two images just as before. We put just base for this one, and oh no, base for this one, sorry. And shape for this one. Leave the settings the same. Shape strength, I think it was there, and we can start with that. I think it's pretty good. You'll see the difference will be quite important there, because you see before it was trying to apply a dress with the shape of a girl, which had some like only jeans or similar like jeans legs. Right now we are going through a different manner. We are trying to help the AI get it. But you see so well, you don't need to be an artist to draw that dress. Honestly, you don't need to be an artist. Yes, you need to know. Some basic drawing stuff if you're going to start like this, and the second one like this, the third one like this, it's obvious at some point. I know some people, for some people, it's not. Always obvious, but if you mess up the base image, you will mess up the final image. It's obvious you need to consider that properly so. You see there, so this is the first generation. Nothing stops you from doing another generation. Nothing stops you from doing a second try, right? Because I see a lot of people who are like, oh no, it doesn't work on the first try. Just do a second try. It's not impossible. So you see the arms are pretty good for the animation. It's quite what I was expecting. For here, not perfect, but there's some sense. Maybe if I increase the shape a little bit, it will get better. I just ask you to do some trials. I think you get the idea of a shape. If you put a slightly higher shape, we'll try that. It will catch my arms. What I'm scared with higher shapes sometimes is it follows too much the original image and it can mess up. Second try, not bad. We've got, you see, when I increase the shape. The animation of the arms are quite slightly better. It's like really a walking animation at that point, I'd say. So I know there isn't like so much difference, but the left arm is a little bit more to the front than the right arm. So that's the idea. I think you get the idea. From there, you'll tell me this is not a perfect sprite sheet. I know. This isn't. I adapted the spreadsheet so that it fits into 256 by 250. Six, you have two choices. Either you use a program where you delimitate the zones, like for the spreadsheets, for every sprite with black and white patterns, and you create a script that extracts the images. You can do that. It's not very difficult to program just as a bit of a programmation skill. If you have no skill in programmation, no skill in image editing, obviously this task for you is too complicated or is out of your skills until you learn them. So what I recommend everybody is to learn some skills. Even CGPT can help you with, you just have to specify. Basically, you split the image into grid of white and black rectangles. Make sure they are purely black and white or it will get some very bad results. From there, you can recreate the original spreadsheet with the right separation between the characters. So I know this isn't a perfect solution. There might be a solution where you can directly input your spreadsheet later that will come, where you're not restricted by this 256 by 256. There is actually, in fact, you can already try it. Without using this resolution, why I ask you to use 256 by 256 is because sometimes some people just take like completely random resolutions. They take 1000 by 1000. Yes, because you didn't restore it to the right pixel size. So I need for those people who aren't really image editors or anything like that. Force them to use 256 by 256. But if you're smarter and that you have already the technical background, etc., you can you should know that you can use Different resolution, as long as they are not too big like 384, starts to be too big all right I hope. You enjoyed this video, don't hesitate to leave a like to subscribe. If some more tutorials like this about spreadsheets, tiles, etc. interest you a lot, 
please leave a comment and specify it. I follow tutorials and I do tutorials based on the people direction they ask me to. If you ask me to do this, 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 I will try to help you make that. Hope you enjoyed this video. See you soon. Bye.